Introducing the Avia Ventilator with Transpulmonary Pressure Monitoring. With exclusive technology, the Avia connects you to your patient like no other ventilator. Transpulmonary Pressure Monitoring is available on all comprehensive units for use with pediatric and adult patients. Transpulmonary pressure is a quantitative and direct measurement of actual pressure required to inflate the lung. Transpulmonary pressure measurements aid the clinician in the management of critically ill patients and specifically in setting optimal PEEP and inflation pressures. Esophageal manometry, which helps to provide the transpulmonary pressure value, is the missing piece of the equation. The Avia ventilator not only provides the esophageal measurements, but calculates the transpulmonary pressure. Transpulmonary pressure reflects the lung inflation pressure and excludes the effect of chest wall compliance as a cause of elevated airway pressures. What does this mean for the patient? That it provides the clinician better tools to help guide inflation pressure and PEEP settings. There may be conditions in which chest wall compliance is elevated and more PEEP is required to inflate the lung. However, without transpulmonary pressure monitoring, the clinician may not be aware of the direct causes of under or over inflation of the lung. The Avia ventilator comes with an array of esophageal balloons to meet the patient's clinical needs. The SmartCath esophageal balloon is offered in a variety of sizes for pediatric and adults. The dual-purpose SmartCath nasogastric balloon offers easy access to the stomach as well as providing esophageal pressure monitoring. The SmartCath nasogastric balloon is offered in pediatric and adult sizes with a quick and easy connection to the ventilator. Obtaining accurate esophageal pressure readings is simple and efficient. When preparing the ventilator for transpulmonary pressure monitoring, you must access the esophageal maneuvers screen by selecting Screens, then Maneuvers, then Esophageal. You next select your balloon choice. Once your catheter is connected to the ventilator, the maneuvers screen will ask the operator to select the appropriate catheter. Once accepted, an icon stating Balloon Test will be displayed. The ventilator will then advise the operator to be sure the catheter is removed from the patient. Depress the button and allow 10 seconds for the balloon test to be conducted. Once the balloon test is completed, a message of balloon test passed will be displayed on the bottom of the screen. The balloon is now ready for insertion. For insertion of the smart cath nasogastric balloon, an approximate level of placement can be made by measuring the distance from the tip of the nose to the bottom of the earlobe, and then from the earlobe to the distal tip of the xiphoid process. The esophageal pressure on button can be activated during insertion to allow the operator to confirm placement of the balloon. Once the esophageal pressure monitor is turned on, monitored displays of waveforms are seen as the catheter is advanced highlighting proper placement in the lungs. Once placed, catheter position can be verified by cardiac oscillations in the esophageal waveform or by chest radiograph. As the placement process is completed, review baseline airway and esophageal pressure waveforms. The ventilator will now begin breath-by-breath -breath measurements on some parameters and requires a maneuver to obtain others, such as lung and chest wall compliance. Remaining in the esophageal maneuvers screen, note the measured values displayed, delta airway pressure and delta esophageal pressure. Additional monitors are located on the left side of the display. These monitors can be changed by touching the monitor and selecting the desired parameter to be observed. By depressing the main key, the operator can now observe all scalar waveforms for clinical observation. To obtain the transpulmonary plateau value, depress the inspiratory hold until a static plateau is identified on the pressure scaler. The value will remain in the monitor window for 15 minutes. If the operator feels this is a valid measurement, they may want to repeat the maneuver to confirm accuracy. When monitored correctly, transpulmonary pressure plateau may more accurately indicate lung inflating pressure, independent of resisting forces.
literature suggests protective lung strategy guidelines should keep transpulmonary pressure plateau less than 20 centimeters water at maximum. To obtain a transpulmonary PEEP, the operator depresses the expiratory hold control until a static baseline is observed. Repeat the maneuver to confirm reproducibility. Transpulmonary PEEP gives the clinician guidelines for PEEP setting and allows the operator to adjust the settings that improve baseline inflation in clinical situations where the chest wall compliance may influence ventilating pressures. Normal transpulmonary PEEP pressure is around zero centimeters water. A negative transpulmonary PEEP pressure may indicate that a patient's PEEP setting could be increased to provide better ventilatory support. Waveforms should be monitored periodically for accuracy and consistency, especially when measurements are being obtained. Any contradiction to nasal or oropharyngeal tube insertion must be considered. Many times, with poor respiratory system compliance, plateau pressure, to be specific, is regarded as the measurement of choice. But in many conditions, such as obesity, fluid overload, and abdominal problems, only measuring plateau pressure may mask the ability to set appropriate ventilator settings. Transpulmonary plateau is a more accurate indicator of lung compliance. Using a two-compartment lung model, we will now visually demonstrate conditions of abnormal chest wall compliance and lung compliance, as well as methods to treat these conditions. The demonstration includes proper methods of obtaining transpulmonary plateau, transpulmonary PEEP, and plateau pressure values. The first scenario will mimic how resistive forces on the chest wall will inaccurately depict how much PEEP is actually inflating the lungs. First, the chest wall compartment is set to 10 centimeters of water pressure, mimicking pressure on the lungs from the thoracic cavity. Note the collapse of the test lung. This is because of the resistive forces that prevent proper lung inflation. When transpulmonary PEEP is measured by doing an expiratory pause, a negative number is depicted, which indicates there is a negative pleural pressure. Once we adjust the PEEP to a value that meets the pleural pressure, the amount of applied PEEP shows little to no distension. Note the difference between plateau pressure and transpulmonary plateau pressure. The transpulmonary plateau pressure depicts the actual pressure to fill the lung, aside from chest wall considerations. Note that by increasing the PEEP, the lung is no longer collapsed, and transpulmonary PEEP is zero, a normal value. In our second scenario, we have a normal chest wall compliance and poor lung compliance, we mimic this by removing the excess pressure in a dual compartment lung model, allowing the lungs to inflate. Note the change in transpulmonary pressure waveform when we remove the excess pressure. By performing another expiratory hold, we can now note the absence of a negative transpulmonary PEEP value. Also, Take note of the high ventilating pressure and the elevated transpulmonary pressure plateau. In this scenario, the clinical problem is poor lung recruitment. Recruitment maneuvers and careful monitoring of plateau pressures will assist the clinician on the best response to adjunctive therapies. In contrast, if PEEP is improperly overset, you may see a transpulmonary PEEP value of above five centimeters of water. For values over 5 centimeters of water, the patient should be evaluated for overdistension. In summary, using the esophageal balloon to provide advanced monitoring capabilities will potentially benefit the most difficult to manage mechanically ventilated patients. Clinicians are able to modify settings based on measured criteria. Additional information can be provided in the AVIA Operator's Manual or your local sales representative. In the ever-changing world of healthcare, clinicians such as yourself face increasingly challenging patients and greater pressure on outcomes. 
The Avia ventilator with transpulmonary pressure monitoring was designed with you in mind. Its comprehensive array of clinical tools and advanced monitoring capabilities allow you to guide your patient through the continuum of care, simply and efficiently, with a focus on improving outcomes.